experience and they might potentially have a, a lower skills level and I'm concerned to hear this issue. Our job centres are already talking to claimants uh, about the support they can give to young people and signposting them to support into employment such as the National Careers Service and giving advice on how they can look for further work and we've also announced our new kickstart scheme for Great Britain. This is a £2 billion fund to support young people at risk of long-term unemployment. Let's head to Glasgow to the SNP spokesperson, Anne McLaughlin. Anne McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My fantastic goddaughter, Tony, is 17. During lockdown, instead of studying or even watching box sets, she became a key worker and helped keep her economy going. For that, she was paid £4.55 per hour. Does the minister think Tony and other people her age are worth any more than that? And if so, will she stand up for the young people of these islands and urge the Chancellor to make it compulsory for employers using the Kickstart scheme to top up this frankly insulting and free-to-them wage? Minister. I'm absolutely passionate about supporting our young people to get the opportunities that they need, and the Kickstart programme is absolutely vital to this. And my officials are engaging with the devolved authorities about how we can uh, make this eligibility criteria attractive and wide-ranging. We're looking at the detail, and we'll have more details for everyone to understand how they can get involved and get opportunities at the start of August. Ten is withdrawn, so I'm going straight to Janet Derby. Janet Derby. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, the Domestic Abuse Bill still does not include critical measures to protect migrant women and girls, which is a necessity for compliance with the Istanbul Convention. Can the Minister tell us how this government intends to protect vulnerable women, regardless of their ethnicity, sexual orientation or immigration status, if it continues to fail to ratify the Convention? We will now head back to Minister Atkins. Minister Atkins. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, the Honourable Lady knows that we already protect the rights of uh, victims of domestic abuse, the rights of uh, other survivors uh, through a whole range of measures, uh, not just in the Domestic Abuse Bill, but I'm delighted that she's raised the bill. It's a groundbreaking piece of legislation, but alongside the bill, we are launching this year a pilot project to uh, understand and measure the needs of migrant women who have no recourse to public funds because we are clear as a government that they must be treated as victims first and foremost. Jerome May. Number 12, sir. Patricia Stay. With permission, Mr Speaker, I will answer questions 12 and 13 together. The Prime Minister has set out his vision to level up and spread opportunity across the country, and the Equality Hub will play an important part in realising that vision by really rigorously analysing where the real inequality in Britain is today, particularly focusing on areas like geogra geography and social background. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Rural poverty is easy to overlook in picturesque areas, which other people associate with holidays and a slower quality of life, but it is every bit as hard and destructive for those who are affected by it. Can my right honourable friend uh, advise the House on what action the government is taking to address rural deprivation? Yeah.